Hey fellow Vault Dwellers, it's Angry Turtle and today we are rating a pro tips from Bethesda that have been recently published and we'll read it together and I will rank it from one turtle to five turtles. That's my ranking system. One is the lowest ranking, five is the highest. Now let's check it out. Followed 76 tips from the pros. Fallout 76 has one of the most welcoming communities in gaming. True, with an enormous shared wealth of tips, tricks and support on how to survive this more dangerous version of Appalachia, if you haven't stepped back out of Vault 76 in a while or if you are venturing out for the first time, we have handful of advice from the pros, the development team and players that started out like you. Consider this a sort of Wasteland Survival Guide Appalachia Edition. Tip 1. Friendly Fire. It can be intimidating coming out of the vault at level 1 and seeing a level 500 in gigantic power armor stamping your way only to stop right in front of you and drop a bug at your feet. Your first instinct may be to flee, but don't fret. This is just the Wastelander way. Many of the veteran Fallout 76 players remember what it was like their first time coming into the dangerous Appalachia and they just want to lend you a helping hand. These drops tend to be welcome bags full of useful resources and items to get you started on your adventure. Don't forget to say hi with a friendly emote wave. Oh, you seen that level 500 in kick-ass power armor coming up to you? Don't worry, he's actually trying to give you a whole bunch of cool stuff. Helping low levels is just what to do around Appalachia. Those higher level players chasing you down like a madman? They probably have weapons, armor, plants, stim packs, purified water and all things needed to get you started and survive a more rat attack. Give them a chance and say hi. Join the public team. It will get you more experience and no one cares if you do. Join casual teams. There is no exception that you will adventure together and as a bonus, you gain more experience and can fast travel to your teammates' camps. Okay, so the rank ranking for this particular one, unfortunately, two out of five turtles. A lot of information missing, way too much time spent on saying hi. So what is missing? In your game settings you can opt out from PvP by setting yourself as pacifist. Pacifist mode will basically avoid any trouble if you worry about unwanted PvP encounter. Joining public team, very good tip, but it's not specified that especially casual team is there for experience, as it gives you more intelligence, therefore more experience. You mainly want to focus on experience, casual team is the most universal and you don't even need to interact with people in there. People creating casual teams usually don't particularly care if they will play with someone or if they will play solo, they create it for benefits. That is missing in those early tips. But yes, it's true, players are friendly and usually want to help you. What is not specified as well, if you see a wanted player on the map, that's probably invitation to PvP, that PvP currently works. So if you want to participate in PvP, look for wanted players. They are usually PvPer and they quite often use voice chat in games so you can communicate with them. Next, resourceful. That's the tip number two. You may be surprised to find out that there is a benefit to being a pack rat. While it's important to monitor your encumbrance to make sure you don't go over, don't want to run out of AP trying to outrun that scourge beast, you are encouraged to pick up and scrap as many items as you can. Items that may look like a pile of junk often have important components that will benefit you in making your weapons armor and camp the best they can be. There are also several pair cards to help you with those skills, so don't dismiss that desk fan in that abandoned office you just walked by. Grab literally everything early game. Most things 
can be broken down for materials and or recipes, so it's worth getting as many components as you can. Before placing your materials in your stash, remember to heat up any crafting station and utilize the scrap or junk feature. Leave no containers unlooted, that extra bobby pin may come in handy down the line. Finding a spot with a junk pie early on for your camp can be super beneficial. I can tell you how many times early on I ran out of adhesive or screws for some to luckily be in the junk extractor. So loot everything is the tip for new players. Absolutely brilliant. 5 out of 5 turtles. It is true in Fallout 76, especially early on, you should pick up everything and scrap it. That's true. As well, Fallout first. I surprised they do not promote it, will give you unlimited storage for your scrap, which is huge and probably the biggest selling point for Fallout First subscription that costs real money, unfortunately. Real money units required for this benefit, but early on, for your first hours, the regular stash box is big enough to handle everything that you will be able to loot for your at least first week. After that situation changed, but this is for new players. So yeah, five out of five turtles. Awesome tip. Prime real estate. That's tip number three. Vault 76 didn't exactly prepare you for roughing it. Luckily with a camp, you can create your own safe space just about anywhere you want. Consider your camp your own momentary reprieve. You can customize it almost any way you want, if you have the time and resources. Your camp offers you a free fast travel point, a place to store your extra items and scraps, a comfy place to rest your head, assuming you set yourself up with a bed, of course, or somewhere cool to invite your friends over to hang. Some players even moonlight their camp as a shop. So make sure you stop by and say hi to other players to see what their camps are up to. Camp McClintock is a good place to set up a first camp. It's good to farm for stuff early on and the Mr. Gutsies keep it pretty safe. Check camp vendors. A lot of people sell plants super cheap. If the prices are super high, most likely you can find someone else selling the same plant for way less. For newer players, check the donation boxes. Higher level players will often leave useful items, weapons and armor in them. The ones outside of Vault 76 and White Spring Station are particularly hotspots. Use player camp as fast travel markers to save yourself long journeys on foot. Building a farm in your camp is a convenient source of caps and adhesive via corn and mud fruit and potatoes. You can also use water purifiers to farm caps. Check your notes section for plants. Plants can be found in the world, bought from vendors or rewarded for events quests. So this is a very good tip overall for new players. I rank it again, five out of five turtles. I will only add from myself that it's worth to visit a lot of player camps. Quite often there are resource extractors that are not locked, so you can get your early supplies that you will not be able to produce yourself. For example, Campanity, one of the best item new player can have and use. This tea is insanely good for AP regeneration that you will struggle on early on. So look for the tea, it's usually free. Oh, it's coincidentally rhyme. Armed and ready, that's our next tip. Let's see this one. In post-nuclear Appalachia, it's best practice not to trust the locals and wildlife. Not every creature you meet will want to maim you, but why risk it? How you play and what weapons you arm yourself with are up to you, but it's a good idea to make sure you have something quick and easy to attack with. Should you need to fend off some raiders or rad roaches, as you play you will find the style that works best for you, whether you want to go the slugger route with a focus on melee or represent the heavy artillery with miniguns and rocket launchers. Always carry a backup melee weapon when you are a lower level player, 
it's Murphy's law that your gun will run out of ammo or break at the worst moment. Holding the reload button will holster your weapon, allowing you to move faster. You can tap the reload button with a fully loaded weapon to cause the ammo grenade count to reappear before fading back out again. Always check your ammo for Messiah mini nukes. They weigh a ton and will over encumber you fast. And fusion cores, their weight can add up. So very good tips in here overall. There is so much more that can be said in this topic, but those tips are very good. But in the same time, so many missing four out of five turtles in here. I have multiple guides for weapons if you are interested in that. But here, what should be mentioned, definitely miniguns and rocket launchers are not friendly for new players. The ammo is not easy to feed if you are a new player as well. Super heavy. I do not recommend that. But melee weapon, yes, and sometimes for daily ops and mutated events, it's required as enemy. That you can find enemies that can only be killed by melee weapons, and the best melee weapon that new player can get is chainsaw. Can be found in the world, do not really require it much, insane damage after you modify it, not too hard to get mods for it. So yes, chainsaw, you should put focus on that, or if you want to spend atoms currently, you can buy auto axe with atoms that's about the same as chainsaw. And for the weapons, yes, the choice is yo overall. But if you are a new player, just get what's the best in the moment. I would not really focus on one weapon type when you are really new. Have fun with whatever you pick up that is the best. Good legendary effect, try every weapon. What you have in the moment, it works best. Use it, use several weapons possibly to rotate ammo, unless you go for ammo farm runs, like simple ammo farm run with ammo boxes. Five minutes, I have a guide for that too, and you will stock by ammo for a day. So it's absolutely worth it if you're running low on ammo. So far, four out of five territories here, and I could talk so much more, but yeah, we need to carry on. We have no full day to talk about weapons and ammo, and I cannot, I cannot spend all the time. I, I could, but no one would watch it. Perks of Fallout 76, that's the next point. Very important one. Let's see how good it is. Customizing a character's playstyle is one of the best parts of the game. Though it could be a bit tricky for someone experiencing it for the first time, once you've decided on your looks and features, you will want to spend some time familiarizing yourself with the special attributes and the pair cards that give you the skills to go with them. Pair cards are very diverse and wide ranging from level to level to help you by increasing the damage you deal to enemies. Weight reduction, enhancing the benefits of aid or resources, unlocking the ability to craft new weapons, armor or camp items. The list goes on. So take your time to figure out what suits you best. Later, when you are feeling up to it, you can, even, you can even create a special loadout to change the type of build you play. Per card selections are very personal, but there are a few that are universally loved. Trawling Pharmacy is a good perk for weight. Steam packs weigh a bunch, especially the super ones. Fruhaika under agility can save a ton of weight from water, alcohol, food. Unless you have literally nothing better to use, do not equip lockpicking hacking cards as part of your regular build. Swap them out as and when you need them. This is the beauty of the pair card system. Learn to love it. Don't sell pair cards that you don't want right away. You won't be able to use the coins for a while and you can switch your build up on the fly. Give yourself options. Concentrated Fire is the pair card that lets you use the VATs you know from the SP games, otherwise you cannot target individual body parts. The, you can use VATs without the Concentrated Fire to, to clarify in here. You just cannot target specific body parts. It will be always torso targeted, the, like overall the target, if you don't have Concentrated Fire. A useful thing to have would be the Super Duper pair card. 
Whenever you craft something, there is a 10, 20, 30% chance of getting double the results. Really helps if you are crafting weapons for attachments or creating ammo consumables. Okay, so we rank that. There are some good tips, some not very good and some missing. This time around, three out of five turtles. So first, what I would like to say, super duper is nice card, but I would not pick it up early. You can get way more cards that are much more important for your combat ability. If you do more damage, you need less ammo. Therefore, super duper, like, it's better to use less ammo per kill than craft 30% extra ammo to then spend 30% more ammo in combat. Focus on combat first and some carry weight, of course, then crafting. I would not focus on crafting first. It would be a mistake, personally, if I would be giving an advice. You cannot go bad, really bad with followed, because you have time to fix whatever you do. The order is not breaking anything, but you can make your life easier. About the traveling pharmacy through Hiker, those are two best carry weight perks. So absolutely yes, those are available early and you will most likely use them all the time. So I would, I would say this is perfect tip. Lockpicking hacking cards. Yeah, you can unequip them and early on you can even pick up a legendary card to lockpick and hack without swapping. It is for comfort, but it's such a level of improvement when you equip this legendary lockpicking hacking card. No longer you need to swap anything and even without upgrading this legendary, you can lockpick tier 3 locks and tier 3 terminals. So yeah, that's what should be probably mentioned in here. Don't sell per cards early. That's true. You don't need those points early. Concentrated fire. It's nice, but that's for VATS focus builds. Not everyone is VATS focused and it should be mentioned as well. You cannot use concentrated fire if you are a melee. You cannot target particular body parts. If you are a melee, it will always be over an enemy targeted in VATS. So that's not specified as well. So again, I could talk and talk and talk about pair cards, but three out of five turtles and we carry on. It's a party. One of the best ways to get experience and get right into the action is to try your hand at any number of public events Fallout 76 has to offer. If you see a lot of dots on your map, that's usually a good indication that there's an activity in progress. In addition to experience, events can also net you some pretty sweet items to help you through your regular journeys. Players of all levels are always keen to have a helping hand when tackling some of the more formidable opponents and tasks Appalachia has to offer. If you are apprehensive, you can also take a peek at the event information to see what the recommended level is to tackle the task. Join a group and go to events. Even if you die a lot, you will soak up experience and items and useful gear. If you see a lot of players at a public event on the map, don't be afraid to join because you are lower level. The more, the merrier. If you are at a public event and it has a countdown timer on it, don't start it when you are by yourself unless you can complete it by yourself. If you are at the end of an event, and you see a bunch of dropped loot, don't be afraid to take it. They didn't want it. Joining an event will fast travel you to the area for free. So those are very good tips. Very good tips about the events. You can say more, but tips are very good. So I'm giving it five out of five turtles. I will just add very important info. We are talking about events with exclamation mark. There is more events, but those are the most important. You always want to do them if other people are there. High level players can usually solo most of the events. If you see at least two to three dots already on the event, go at least check it out. If you cannot contribute, just learn what the event is about. If you are too low level, way lower than recommendation, still go there. If there are other people, you will still get rewards. 
So go there, learn, be there, unlock spots on the map and stuff. That's, that's a good recommendation. So I support it. Food for tough. Is that another tip or is it summary? At the end of the day, it's all up to you how you play and the things you want to do. Appalachia has a lot to, to offer, so play at your own pace. Ranger towers are scattered throughout the map. Climbing to the top of one of these towers allows you to survey the area, which adds points to your map that you can explore. It's also just a pretty view. If there is a punch bowl in someone's camp, drink from it immediately and without question. You can get experience shooting the balloons during the Fastnacht event. There is a perfectly preserved pie on the roof of West Tech. Don't dismiss the quick boy option. It makes the regular pip boy display in front of you as a floating window, in a similar manner to the power armor pip boy display. Hunting animals for meat to cook is one of the more convenient sources of healing if you are low on steam packs. So those are some bonus tips. Bonus tips are always welcome, so five out of five turtles. I will add to bonus tips. Check your game settings. You can switch on things like damage numbers so you see how well your weapon is actually performing. You can change the pip boy color if you choose to. There is a lot of graphic settings. As I said previously, you can activate pacifist mode in there. You can change power armor hat to hat display to be like a normal display if you don't like the power armor overlay. You can change a lot of things. Go over those settings slowly. Choose what fits your preference. And that being said, this is everything that was there for today. A lot of tips, a lot of good tips. So much more could be written down, but don't worry. You will discover everything if you choose to play Fallout 76 for years to come, and you absolutely can. And that being said, thank you a lot for being here. Thank you for joining Fallout community and see you in the next one.